Okay, we're ready to call the meeting to order. Thank you all for being here. First item on our agenda is discussion and approval of the minutes. That's a copy. We all have a couple of minutes to look over them. Motion to approve the minutes as presented. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Citizen uh, comments, we don't have any. We did not have any citizen comments on today. Library reports, adult services. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Beth Gomez. Hello again. Um, I'll be going over the adult services from last month. So we had two cooking classes. They were both at the same day, same time, different branches. At South Moose, we had the fruit salad. And here at Maine, with the help of the public health department, uh, we did the watermelon cake. We had good numbers, and the people love the free food. <laughs> Healthy too, I think. Good, two years. Um, for the movie night, we, uh, we had Forrest Gump, and um, we always give popcorn and iced tea. They enjoyed it this time. Sometimes when we get a location, we get a different crowd each time. So sometimes it's in the meeting room, but let's say the meeting room is busy. We have it over here in the front, and like people stay longer. We, uh, because April is the month of Easter, before Easter, on the very first week of April, we had a find a book challenge. And so I was thinking like, what can we do to help people know how to look for a book with the Dewey Decimal System? And so I got this thing of uh, saying of, uh, of bringing up this challenge for four days. We got adults, teens and kids to participate. It was an adult event, but we got, everybody to participate. They took a picture, more people actually tried the challenge. They would pick up a golden egg, choose, I uh, mean, open it, and find the book of the call number that was inside. Uh, if they found the book and they liked it, they could check it out. Some of them did. Others, uh, they said, no thanks, <laughs> but they wanted to get the bunny bookmarker and that's what they got. We also had a class for Dress for Success. Like we were teach, uh, showing people like, how are you supposed to come dress for that interview? What is appropriate, what is not? And even we even gave them some tips on how to present yourself for that interview. Uh, for Poetry Night, we had Vlad Vladimir Swarnski. He's a poet who's been traveling around and he shared his uh, poetry with us, very adultish. <laughs> Uh, he had to ask one of the teams, can you please step away? Because <laughs> I'm going to say something, right? So he was concerned about that too. Like, um, he was conscious about that. And I bring this up because I do want you guys to know that we want to be able to have interests that are for 18 plus as well. Uh, then during the disability week, I'm not too sure if Courtney is going to go over. Nope. For the disability inclusion week, uh, on Tuesday, we had an activity for teens, met for teens, and it was called Through Our Eyes. We had different activities where uh, each a person can come in and try to see like what it would be to sort of like have that struggle 
like for example, the vision impaired, right? We kind of learned that four million people, 14 million people in the US suffer with some visual impairment. That means using contacts or glasses or anything that counts because every time you wake up in the morning, you'll see blurry. And not unless you don't uh, have a perfect vision, I mean, it's, it's a struggle. And so the people who have perfect vision and tried some glasses on with Vaseline on them, they are like, oh man, this is bad. <laughs> and the one thing too is that they would know that if you do, if you wear them on for too long, or even if you wear glasses from somebody else, you know you'll get a headache. So you have to have a good vision. It's very important to have a good vision. On Thursday, we had lavender rice sauce. So I uh, had some fun with that, even the kids. We were putting lavender and rice in that sauce and it felt like really good. So it was a really squishy thing and it was it, it could be used to uh, calm down anxiety and pressure for people because the scent of the lavender helped. I was, let me just interject that I was there for that presentation yeah. with someone else. Um, she gave me one and I took it when we used to get in the microwave and it, it was wonderful. <laughs> and my wife was also presented through our eyes. She went right to state consultant for the blind and visually impaired. And so she did a presentation for the library. So for the month of May, this May, we began the computer classes again, second semester, summer semester computer classes. Tonight at six o'clock, we're having the mommy and me craft uh finger painting we will be having a cooking class and recipe swap class we're going to be showing the movie armageddon and the three little kids play at the end of the month please come it'll be fun <laughs> yeah. uh, and in the month of june the computer classes will continue we're going to have a craft for fathers too a craft night uh the classical music concert they gave me confirmation that they're going to come that they're going to come they're going to be here uh, the dress etiquette class, class, I'm sorry, typo, typo, that was my fault. And the bottom one too, because we already did it this April. Sorry for that. That's it. Any questions? The classes, is it by library staff? We have guest speakers? Or... The computer classes? Oh, no, the, all the different classes you were talking about. Were they library staff or they had guest speakers come in? Um, it varies. Uh, if we do not have somebody from an outside organization, we do it ourselves. We do the research. We Whoever has experience in it, like what we do. Yes, on May the 26th, uh, we have kids from ages uh, 6 to 12, 6 to 12, who are acting, right, for the Three Little Pigs play. Um, it's an uh, for everyone, it's an event for everyone. Um, it's, to me, it's really exciting because I see <laughs> I see them, and the moral of the story, I, I like to have our plays that have a moral to the story. And this one is going to be that I mean, with effort, with time, with practice, like you'll get it there. It's what counts. For the play, is it an outside group coming in or is they work in the library? I'm the director. You're the director. Oh, yeah. 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 And the director and staff is helping out and setting up the scene, the, I mean, sorry, the stage uh, with the practicing. We communicate with the parents. They're all into it too. So we got, we got it's all well rounded. How long, how many practices do you have having? We were practicing since April. So the beginning of April. And so it's coming up. The kids, they already know their lines. So it's just having them do it all over again. Make sure you face the front, the, the audience. Uh, no running. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're little. <laughs> and it's free for the public. I have a question. Thank you. Youth services. So just wanted to make you aware that the parks department is uh, hosting the 
Um, well, they're organizing the Games of Texas and well, the city is hosting July 27th through the 30th. They um, are expecting the Games of Texas are kind of like the Texas Olympics for, you know, for all ages. And uh, it'll be hosted uh, at seven different facilities throughout the city. And they are going to have the sports that are mentioned in your uh, fires there, basketball, flag football, pickets, uh, pickleball, skateboarding, soccer, softball, boxing, golf, swimming, tennis, and track and field. So um, it's going to be a pretty big event that will be happening. I did uh, go ahead and give you two separate um, advertisements, a smaller one and, and uh, a bigger size poster. If you could share with anyone you know, uh, Parks Department is looking for volunteers, not only from within the city, but from within the community. So I don't know if you know, if you're interested in volunteering or know anyone that would be interested, they can sign up through their website. Um, and so, yeah, they, they expect um, athletes from all over the state to come in for those uh, three days this year uh, to go ahead and participate. And we are also hosting for next year. <laughs> wanted to make you aware that that is something that is going on. Did uh, adults, kids, or it's just... all ages, um, adult, from children all the way to adults. Mm -hmm. I can participate. Yeah, and if I may add, is this something that, I mean, this is planned by the park department, but under the one city, all of us want to help out the park, so, you know, we're going to be out on the news, you know, and so you as board and Spread the word too that everybody's aware of uh, trying to do a matching would be very important for this for founders. It's going to be for two consecutive years this year or next year. So if you can spread the word, that would be great. Yes, that's it. Just a brief overview. <laughs> Key services. Okay. Um, so as you know, we had National Library Week between April 23rd and um, I had y'all giving y'all some homework at the last meeting um, where we had a story right the concept and we curated. Um, so coming up, I'm gonna put the winners up right now. So the winners of our writing concerts for the zero to five is Derek Tabaco. Our winners for the six to twelve group is Preston Tabaco. From the 13th and 17th group, Sophia M. Fano, and the 18th group is Ashley Gomez. So I want to talk with them. Yes, so I want to thank you all for your time and for this. And um, it was a success, but we usually have a hard time getting people to submit entry for these type of events. Um, but we actually had a good uh, turnout for this. So I was pleasantly pleased. Can I take a few comments? So it was really hard. Some of them were very good. A lot were very good. It's kind of very close call for everybody else. But I thought they were very close calls to me. Can I, can I have you a few critiques maybe for next year? Yes. That's it. Effective criticism would be, uh, I guess the, the rubric was, it wasn't as helpful for the younger kids, right? Because it was, I mean, yes. it was eligible, eligible, eligible. Not eligible, but eligible. So uh, you know what I mean. So the rubric, I, I almost think it could be a little simplified, uh, just for the younger, the younger kids. Um, another thing is, uh, I, I I wonder if maybe it's better to, if you can. I know this is this this was a good event, but you, you want to advantage so you can get, but to like make it more like apples to apples. So for instance, compare the book review to book reviews or. Compare like several did the uh, lost like locked in a library like that would have been good just to compare those to each other and maybe you don't have enough prizes to do that but you know what I mean it was sort of like you two or three entries would be locked in the library and then one would be just kind of like just a uh, whatever the author wanted to write about you know what I mean so it kind of felt like I wasn't comparing the same things um, and the other the only other thing too is and again maybe it's we need more prizes but. In some categories, it's actually a broad range. I think six to 12 is a big range, right? Comparing a 12 year old who's like sixth grade to a six year old who's in like, you know, in their first. So I don't know if maybe some of those could be broken up. Okay, broken up. Maybe thoughts for next year. 
Thank you for the input. We will definitely consider it. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for sharing this. Um, any other suggestions? I know you did a suggestion. You know, you uh, Google Forms for the river, right? And just so you know, the prizes that you see on the table here, these are the prizes that the individuals will be winning. Um, they will be getting called. Uh, it's the latest Wednesday, hopefully I can do it after this meeting. At the very end, it's easy. Uh, it's going to be the zero to five. The one right here in the middle, which is the art box, is the uh, uh, six to 12. Right here, uh, it was the, I feel like the glass of the team. And this set over here is the dogs. We'll go ahead and move on. So let's load. Right. Hey, Harvey, that was an event that we had on Monday, um, April 24th. As you can see, the kids were covered in paint. They covered themselves in paint. They covered the canvas in paint. And they covered the, the, the floor and other surfaces in paint, right? But they had fun. Um, they love the music. They were to have really good leverage to this. Uh, we had 73 at the top of the French. And that was the main branch. We had, I know it was over 100 and 20 for sure. I'm not sure the exact numbers, but I know it's over 20. I think the uh, individuals that came and out to celebrate with us. Little librarians. So the kids got to learn how to do librarians. They got a badge, they got to do story time with staff members, and then they themselves got to do story time with a little book buddy. So they got a little buddy who puts their whole book their little stuff out of they got to read to their stuff out of it. Um, and then we taught them how to sell books. They had a coloring pages uh, with library information. So they could design their own bookmark. There's something that they could take home with them. Um, at the main branch, we had about a couple of friends about uh, about 40 some uh, participants, a little more than 40 participants. And I know at the top of the main branch, we had over 150 participants. For me, it's over 150 participants. Uh, students, kids, all ladies. And then on the Friday, we had open my way. Um, we had, sorry, the pictures came out kind of blurry. Uh, the kids presented, their, we had two kids over here that one was telling their life story, the other one was reading a book to the, to the audience. We had some presenters at the main branch, they got to sing, uh, they played instruments. Um, at the main branch, we had how many students? A lot of, a little bit of over 80. It was about 80 participants at the main branch. At the Southwest branch, we had about we had about 30 participants. Um, the kids were running around, so never seen them in a crowd, but there were about 30 participants and all them together, audience and those participating. At the Southwest branch, we saw more kids participating from 10 and under. And on the main, we saw more um towards the teen, older adults participating. So we had a few kids as well. And that is all the events we had for the library. Thanks. That's like you served. The, I'm sorry. It sounds like what you have is out of order. I'm sorry, yeah, I'm just <laughs> no, you're sorry about it. Um, so I'm Kayla, one of the youth services librarians. Um, we'll be going over what we did last, well, what we did recently, and then what we'll be doing in the future. Um, so our big event for May was actually Free Comic Book Day. Um, so Free Comic Book Day is a national program. Um, comic book stores, libraries, uh, you know, places like that all over the country host Free Comic Book Day. Um, so during this day, we gave out free comic books um, to to adults and children of all ages. And then we also had Black Panther and Captain America make an appearance. Um, to do a photo op with with all the participants. So those are just some pictures there, and then there's some more pictures on the next slide. Um, we had a really good turnout at both branches. At Maine, it was so early we had a little bit of a slow start, um, but we promoted it on our social medias, and then at Southmost it it picked up really quick. So um, it was a lot of fun. The kids had fun, and Black Panther and Captain America were were amazing. Um, so. I'm gonna spend most of my time talking about Reading Around the World, which is our summer reading program for this year. I'm talking about it now just because it's gonna start on June 6th. Um, and 
what we're doing, um, we're starting with our kickoff party um, at Main and South Mills on June 6th. So that's where our patients can come and register. They can ask questions. They can pick up their packets, pick up their gift bags, um, and, and learn more about the program. Uh, registration will continue. Uh, I don't remember the date exactly, um, but it'll continue for about two to three weeks. Um, so even if they don't make it to kickoff, they can still register. We'll have like an online form um, that they can fill out. And then they'll still be able to pick up goodie bags. So those are first come, first serve. So as they register, they just have to show up, show their confirmation, and they get their, their goodie bag and their um, registration packet. Um, some of the presenters and shows we're having this year, um, we're having Gladys Porter Zoo, which we have every year. It's always a huge hit. We're having the Reading Magic Show. That's with John O'Brien. That one's also a big hit. Um, a newer one that we're doing is Contacto Animal. Um, they're going to bring some cool animals. They have these really cool like dinosaur puppets that they bring. And so we're hoping that it's able to draw a big crowd. Um, and then more on the educational side, we're having a park ranger from Resaca de la Palma State Park to come in and kind of give an overview of, of nature and visiting the state park and that kind of thing. Um, this year, our reading challenge, that's the breakdown of our age groups. Um, ages zero to four, we're doing a baby and toddler challenge. Um, so we all have, we always have parents who are like, well, I don't want to register my one-year-old because they can't read. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, you can read to them and that kind of counts, um, but they never like that answer. So <laughs> this year we're doing the, the baby and toddler challenge. It's going to be, so down there at the bottom where it says like, sing the alphabet song together, uh, dance to a song you both love, look at a picture book together and name different colors. Those are, um, there's about 12 of those. And so um, they just have to complete those with their kids. It's a little bit easier, a little more accessible for parents. Um, and if they complete, you know, if, as they complete the challenge, the baby just colors it in or they can color it in for them. And that's the, the challenge for that. Um, and then of course our older kids and sorry, sorry, sorry. and then our older kids and adults will have the regular uh, challenge of reading certain a certain amount of books. So ages five to eleven have to read six books, twelve to seventeen will read four. And then 18 plus will read uh, three books. And then the reading lock for this one is just they, they it's the title of the book, the author, um, and then like a short summary of the book that they read. Um, so now I can go to the next slide. Um, some goals that we set up for ourselves this year. Um, we're, look, we're hoping for about 800 total registrations. Um, that's a goal that we actually met last year. So we're hoping to meet it again. Um, we're hoping for 400 total submitted reading logs, um, and then we're hoping for 75 rag tag entries. So those of you who were here last year might remember those, but uh, if not, the rag tags are these little incentives that we're going to be giving out at some of our programs. So we have 10 of those rag tags to give out at 10 different programs. Um, if a patron collects at least five of them, which means they went to at least five of our programs, they get entered into the brag tag giveaway where they can win a Nintendo Switch. So um, it's just a way to get them coming to our programs. Um, and we want, we're hoping for at least 75 entries because that means we have at least 75 people coming to uh, multiple programs that we host. And then we're having our summer bash again this year. Um, we're hoping for at least 500 attendees. Um, that's also a goal we met last year. So we're hoping to meet it again this year. And um, at the summer bash, it's gonna be kind of like a water park theme. So we're having a foam party, we're having water slides, all the activities will revolve around water and getting messy. Um, so that'll be hosted here at the main branch uh, outside of course. Um, so those are our goals. And I believe that's the last slide. Um, so any questions? This is youth services. Yes. Yeah. So I gave, um, there's a little save the date on everyone's um, section. So that kind of gives like a really quick overview of just the presenters that we're hoping to draw people in with. And then of course our kickoff party. I was going to ask, are there, are there any uh, uh, summer camps, maybe uh, ideas for the summer to, uh, or summer programs? Sometimes in the past, they used to be stem related stuff that would happen in the library. So um, <clears throat> the, there's programming pretty much every day. So it's not a summer camp where people can just drop off their kids. We're trying to encourage families to come and learn and play together. 
uh, but there's something to do almost every single day. Adult services hosting programs, makerspace holding programs, teens are hosting programs, and then um, we're of course hosting programs. So it's going to be a, a, a big thing for people of all ages, and there's there's going to be something. To do. Other question. What is the age which parents can drop off their kids? Um, so there's a that's a library policy and it varies, but it's usually 14, 14, 14 and above, they can be here on their own. How is that tracked? Um, it's just they're teenagers so at that point, so we hope that they have a little bit they're more cautious of their surroundings. Um, for the main part, if they're any younger than that, we require that an adult be with them or that at least somebody who, you know, uh, who's above that 14 bracket stays with them. How does the library check them? Sorry? How does the library check them? Um, well, basically, it's it's suspicious behavior. If we see a child here that's on their own, we'll be like, where's your parent? And if they don't, then that's when we follow through. But it's sometimes especially if they catch our attention that we've seen them by themselves for a while, we'll check up on them. Does that happen in the summer? Yes. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. I guess one of those writing commissions, I write somewhere where the child is dropped off and about me wondering how does that work out? Thank you. Teen Services. Hi. So I will be presenting for Teen Services today. My, my name is Beatriz Morales. I am one of the teen librarians. Um, first official presentation. Next slide, please. Um, so our first event was the Teen Anime Club. And for this event, we had origami folding presentation um, and a craft for our younger audiences as well that was actually very well received by all ages. Um, they had to create one of the, in the corner to the right at the very bottom next to the origami, right there. So the pink um, little folding, that's the origami paper that they were creating. And then right next to it is the little, one of the sprites from the Spirited Away movie, which we watched um, and the creation of kind of like making that your own and taking it home with you. Um, both of them were very well received by all our attendees, children, teens, and adults. Um, as you can see at the top picture, uh, some people came dressed for the occasion, and it was, again, very well received. We also, we also served popcorn and um, tea for that. I have a question. So yes. this is teenagers working with younger kids on activities, all teens? So, no, this is all a family, an open for families. So teenagers depended on their own. They were helping. Um, our younger kids a lot, but if someone wasn't comfortable doing the origami on their own, or maybe they just didn't even want to try it, we did have a secondary option, which was the Spirited Away Sprite um, creation that we did. So it was all age friendly, but everyone kind of wanted to do a little something. Any other questions about that? So uh, we also had a team. I this, I have a title. We had a teen resume presentation, um, and this was leading up to the teen job fair that we had recently this past week. So the presentation was on resumes, do's and don'ts, tips, tricks, and important bits. Um, we went over, we had a presentation, and we went over anything regarding resumes, which is including um, don't put your picture on it, what information you might want to not have, and then especially since this was a team program, how you can bypass some of the jobs requirements and um, focus on educational, volunteering, um, maybe any family work that you do. So ensuring that we kind of use those strengths to our advantages when creating a resume for our younger groups. Um, any educational teams, uh, groups, stand, all of that we, we discussed. Um, so it was pretty good, I think. And these are our upcoming events for May 2023, our job fair we just had this past week. We, uh, we had a very successful turnout. Um, 
We had over 550 people show up, but we'll talk more about that in the next meeting. Um, we also have our teen anime club coming up. This time we're gonna be discussing um, a potential change in graphics so our teens will have the voice to kind of choose that on their own um, to have their voices heard a little bit more. Sorry, that I, I got that confused. Um, that's with Teen Advisory Council. But we will also be continuing our discussion with the Teen Anime Club. We will be again um, having a presentation and um, hope for a similar turnout with our families. Of course, we're focusing on our teens. We have our reference for teens. Um, that's every Sunday um, between two and four for any any second and third Sunday of the month um, from two to four. We are hoping to grow that as well to continue our services for teens. Um, coming up is also the yoga and meditation tips that we'll be having. Um, two different dates upcoming in May for Southmost and then in June for May. Um, our teen advisory council, we're also gonna continue doing this and this will take place in the Southmost branch. And then um, at the very bottom, we have our bulletin for the, for the rest of May. Any questions about this? I have a question. Yes. So, are you a teenager? Are you in high school? No, okay. I'm an adult. <laughs> okay, I wasn't sure about that. Okay. Well, I, just, I, have to, I have a teenager, and it's like I remember being here with you know, my younger kids. So, I, I definitely appreciate the effort to try to have activities for the older kids. Um, uh, it's hard to kind of get them into the library. So, I definitely appreciate it. We understand that teens are in a very um, in an age that is difficult because they're not quite adults yet, but they're not quite children. So they don't have decisions about a lot of the things like where they can go or to do what because they're still part of the family. But we are trying to give them as many choices as we can here and as many opportunities to choose for themselves and giving them the safe space, particularly in the Teen Advisory Council. That's only for teens. Everything else we're including, um, it's kind of family friendly. Um, but for the teen advisory, it's only for our teens. We don't uh, ID at the door, but. Um, yeah. But the idea of the teen advisory council, they're running the meeting. So they we have a presentation, we have a discussion. We do talk with them about um, what they would like to see, what they're liking. Um, and for this one, we're going to try to see more or less if they would like to have a little bit more of a voice in terms of the, um, the logo that we'll be using for that. So we're hoping to give them more of an opportunity to make those decisions and have know that their voices are being heard here at the library to the best of our abilities. We can't make promises for everything, of course. What, what's the turnout been? I, I think it started in January, right? The, the advisory company was um, started in Yes, this started in uh, February, and so far it ranged between three and 60, depending on the branch. We are trying to start for August. Uh, we don't gonna have it on June and July, but we are planning to start to run everything. And for August, we are aiming to have two advisory calls, one here and one at South, now that I have help. So I think that will help more to grow more engagement between them. So they know that it will be everyone in the same branch, so they will be you know, more used to it. So we are aiming for that. But yeah, well, for now, between three and six. I think that's part of the engagement. I think those activities are what is trending for them. And um, also on your graphics too, because that catches their attention, right? Like when, once they see they're like, okay, what's this about? And that yoga meditation tips, definitely, because you know, all that social and emotional uh, things that they're going through, you know, with the pandemic and because of testing, through, yes, and the anxiety of testing and, and all of that. So that I think that would be a great activity for them. For that one, um, they didn't need to give me an album, so they had to sign a waiver. Okay, due to their making like you know, yeah. uh, where they are teaching how to do yoga in order to be there, they need an album. So that's a little bit tricky, but it's something that we need in order to assure that everyone's gonna be safe and then we are not liable for anything. And you know, so that for that one, they it isn't a flyer. So when we promote it, we let them know, hey, you need to be like an adult in order. That's what I know is tricky, but yeah, we need but it. at least you're trying there. Yes. <laughs> and that's the show up. 
that one they partnered up with the uh, public health department, so they're providing the instructor. Yeah. Yeah. Did we have a question? Oh, I'm going back to Will and summer activity and the water slides. The there summer bash. There to provide us one as a liability. No. 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 Because that one. Because in that one is because the the summer one is mainly run by us and it's a family one so they can go ahead um the parents should be with with the children at that point um the one for the yoga is because we're partnering with the health department and that is a requirement that they have and i have another comment about it and also when we try to just find out an instructor they ask for it about it so then if they, they would be liable for something yeah. so that's why well, in relation to to the activities that they're going to have, we're not having a swimming pool or anything where they're where they're swimming. It's just more of like the foam party uh, type of event, and then I don't know. What other the water slides say. are provided by Rental World, yeah. and they have insurance. Mm -hmm. They're required to have it. Um, don't jinx it because we haven't had incidents in the past. We had a rock wall last year and it went by without any incident. Um, so we're just, you know, we promote safety. We have staff literally everywhere. Um, so, you know. Yeah, Parks and Rec also have water slides. So. Yeah, yeah, and so it's, yeah. yeah. Did, did I hear the water slides are only on this location or is it in both? Um, so the summer bash, we uh, rotate between the years. So last year we had the summer bash at the southmost branch. We had like over 700 people show up. That one was more carnival rides. Um, so it was, you know, it wasn't a water party. We did have a inflatable slide, but it was a dry slide. Um, this year we are having it at the main branch and now the theme is, you know, water park-ish. So we're having, that's why we have all the water attractions. Coming up, sorry. Coming up a little further in our future, um, the team lock-in is going to be happening uh, June second. We are preparing for that, um, so it's going to be Friday, June second. We will have staff there to be kind of taking care of everything. Um, it's going to start from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. It'll be at our southmost branch, and it's, again, teens only. We will have a parent drop-off. We will have parent signature allowing for this to occur. Um, we're not, we're starting to promote it since it's starting to come up. Um, we'll be having food, games of all sorts, video and board games, movies, craft, prizes, and raffles. Um, so we're hoping to have a pretty good turnout. So the first one we're doing in a couple yeah, a few years. Yeah, a few years. Twenty, uh, twenty twenty, right before COVID, we had our last. Not yet. Uh, we're still we're still finalizing our details, but we did want to let you know um, now, since it's kind of coming up soon. Uh, we usually averaged about thirty kids per branch when we used to do them. Ages, thirteen to seventeen. Most of them are. Most of them were. It was a pretty good. It was a pretty good balance. But if I have to guess, I think maybe the sixteen-year-olds were predominant in there. And boy, girl, how does that more or less how many of each? I don't remember to tell you the truth. I mean, it it's was. Like it was. Split. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we had both show up, and then we have. Uh, so there's no, like, no boyfriend girlfriend showing up that day. That's I guess. Well, I'm not, it, it's happened, but yeah. they we have that's why we have so many staff members only to <laughs> patrol the <laughs> island. You can but, say, yeah. yeah, but we you, we usually have one or two couples show up per per team lock in the past. So, so that's there, that we always keep an eye on anyway, yeah. because sometimes we have teens, you know, hiding in the back of the stack. Mm -hmm. So we do our walks and we have yeah. to tell them, hey, like, yeah. you know, <laughs> so yeah. it's it's a normal thing that we're mm -hmm. used to dealing with, not just, you know, a lock in. They're well supervised. Right. A lot of movie scenes for the same place in the life. <laughs>
Um, and that is actually my life, my last slide. Um, I forgot to do a thank you slide, but um, thank you so much for your time. Is there any questions for me? Thank you. Our next report, uh, Baker Space. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> so just a quick uh, update for Maker Space. Just wanted to know that in case you haven't heard, we do have boat screens available. Um, it's really about well boat branches and pretty well received. We have patrons already using it, using the service. Um, it's a dollar for linear foot for regular paper, and we do offer glossy water paper. It's three dollars for linear foot. And like I said, patrons are loving it. They love that it's portable. They're using it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all we have on that. Uh, it's being used by internally in the library as well for promotional material. Makes everything look a lot nicer. And it's good. Uh, so, looking on some of our equipment, uh, we have purchased the iMac computers for both branches. Those will be arriving soon, as well as some new 3D printers for as well for both branches. Uh, looking to provide better service for our patrons with the computers and faster and better rates with our computers. And that's as well as our program updates. So. We had our for our superhero week for comic book day. We had our further beat event at both libraries. It's always very popular. We had a full 102 people show up for our event, combined with both branches. Later on in the month, we'll have a bridge theme activity, which will uh, challenge our patrons to build a, a bridge that's going to be able to withstand uh, as much weight as possible on it. And for the summer, we have our tech petting zoo, which will give us pages an opportunity to be more hand with all the equipment that we have, as well as our VR headsets, the iPads that we have that we purchased, the robots we have on hand, pretty much everything that we would just hands on all of it. <coughs> and, and then for ongoing projects, we have our staff training. We just want to be able to ensure that our services are available even when we're not here. And in case any patrons come in with questions, our staff is well equipped to help the patron out, get them started on their projects. Like, for example, our staff member Kat here is already well versed in all of our uh, equipment. So be able to help out if you're ever in here and you can be able to help you out, as well as other, other staff members at both branches. That's it. That's what we got. Any so we have a couple of that enable block coding so we, with the iPads they're able to just program the robot to do different things. We have a zero, we have a uniform, we do have little mini drums they can also use and as well as Legos. Um, and then we're looking to provide us to the patients. Um, most of the time they'll just they submit a, a project and we do it for them. We want to be able to uh, encourage them to you know, get be more hands with all the equipment. A lot of, I feel like a lot of the, the fear is a lot of want to break the machine. And it's like, no, it's like this is really simple to use. And that's what we want to support. Um, I did want to say we appreciate that they're still. Um train the staff because I know I wanted my shirts that I put in my papers a lot. Um, I have called the, the uh, library and we weren't available here, but they had to be at South Mall. So I think it, it is very important that we, we can train at the library just in case you're not here. Like, do we have somebody here when somebody would want to use it? Um, also, they're very knowledgeable on all the uh, machines, the way that, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, last Asaro, Asaro was explaining to me how the machine worked and he was showing me, um, which I appreciate that taking the time to actually show the patients how to use it so that we can free up your time to use other um, machines or to help a different patient. I think that was that's very good that you show the patient how to use it. That's the goal. We want our, all, all yeah. our staff members to be comfortable showing our patients that they so. are not here. I'm in love with makerspace. I love it. I love it. I'm a theater. No, thank you so much. I can add something. Uh, Anthony and Lazaro have been asked to provide to library administration first what is the state of the maker space, what are the wants, what are the needs. If we don't pretend to know it all, then they're going to present to us what they need that we can plan accordingly. 
whether it's more equipment, whether it's more assigned staff to them, whatever that is. It's basically an assessment. Again, maker space is ever evolving. And so we're gonna they're gonna give us the wants and the needs so we can plan for the future. What's the turnaround time for the projects? Is there depends what it is? I know we got my I think I did like three shirts and we got them done in like what 10, 15 minutes. So yeah, it, it was quick. Um there, there was nobody else there, it was just me. So um I think I had mentioned to last time maybe doing like appointments just to make sure somebody is there. Um, I don't know. We, we do appointments based on their projects. Um, at least today, I had somebody actually helping on the project now. Then I had somebody come in that needed to use the global work, so I had to send them yeah. out. Yeah. Um, they're available, we're able to we'll send them where they need to go. Any other questions? Comment? Thank you. Outreach. My name is Courtney Taylor. I'm the Library Services Coordinator for both branches. I'll be presenting on outreach today. Next slide. We went to the Career Expo here at the event center. Our feedback was that both the youth and teachers were surprised at the variety of services they offered, and they really felt all the stuff that we were able to make in the inner space. Bertha, Bettina, and Katya attended this event and we saw over 500 people. Next slide, please. Jose and Bill say this is the consulate. This is one of our traditional outreaches. They were able to leave additional flyers out for TRG students. We were able to see over 46 people. Next slide, please. We again look to be Metro. These are one of the outreaches that we're going to slow down in June and July to our summer reading program. But we were able to see 546 people between Jose, Josh, and Ray Isabel. They really liked hearing about the summer reading program and our upcoming events. Next slide, please. We were requested to join our nonprofit resource fair through the grants department. And we were interviewed to be able to see the services that the library offered so we'd be able to promote that on TV. Mary Bell, Kayla, and Josh again went to this. There's 30 different people, and we were offered to go to at least two other outreaches due to this event. And then, next slide. Idea of Brownsville Campus had a community meeting. The children asked about three prints in the summer reading program. There was 206 children saw as well as Halo and Fina and Barry outreaching to the students. And I have to commend both Barry and Katya for engaging with our teens and children in a very professional manner, as well as engaging on all the different member state services and all the possibilities that are available there. Next slide, please. We then went to the farmer's market to be able to promote library and disability inclusion week. This led to a couple of pictures talking to us about other services that we might include, um, including different sensory hours, which our children's library offers for our larger events. I went to that and we have 207 pictures. So this is our final rendition for the BISD migrant family meeting. They were able to do a craft and talk to the general services of the adult guys. I was very grateful that our excellent team has been able to help them not just show them, but promote literacy to their migrant patronage. Got 100 people there, and we will not be going back until next school year, just because that's when the migrant department goes again. Next slide. This is our first of our adult thinkers, um, Ms. Bertha, who did the adult services was there. She helped by uh, doing press with other individuals as well as into them. She did a couple and had predominantly Spanish speaking audio. Mm -hmm. Next time they asked that we have a diversity in press, which she is working on. We have 30 people total at this adult picture outreach. Next is Sapples as well as farmers market. We thought we were going to see a lot of children at this event, but a lot of it was adults who were in the Southwest Keys and offering services through them. So we were able to show that we offer tour 
partners off the library cards, again, or our anchor space. They saw over 324 people. Uh, questions that that's the farmers market or is that something different? This is the South Wales Keys Wellness Farmers Market at the City of Brownsville Farmers Market. They have a farmers I wasn't familiar with it, so I was curious. Okay. Also participated in Earth Fest 2023. We were trying to promote our pollinator garden, so we used a bunch of excess resources that we had in the library to create their own potting plants for soil and do wild flowers or seed packets so that they could make their own pollinator garden at home, as well as put some cars with them to libraries. Katie, uh, Jeanette, and Bettina got to see over 326 patrons and give them all crafts and resources with the library for her. Next slide, please. This is our final daycare. You see Mr. Wilson when he's part of the adult services for South Coast. He promoted our adult computer classes, mobile languages, and community engagement, and kind of proving that librarians aren't there just to read books to you. We're also there to find you for what we receive. We saw 59 patrons. This brings our outreach total for this month to 1,983. We're close to 9,000 for this year. Any questions? Great job. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. I have a question. Have you all tried the mall? I know there's a lot of teams there, but I don't know. I haven't been here that long to know if you've already reached there. We have not. Um, part of it was trying to get with the mall administration to set up a table, um, as well as varying our staffing needs. Uh, it's a high traffic area. So to be able to do that, we want to send at least one of the members to be able to do it effectively, as well as have a issue. So I, I may have a contact with them all if you want to. I, I can send you an email so I can get that contact with you. I have a question. I don't know if this is the place, but I'm on time, but I'm going to ask anyway. If there's if there's an organization that would like for the library to come in or library services to come in and speak of your services to that. We will contact me. So my email is the same as my name, just with the dot between. So Courtney dot Taylor at browsertx.com. But I have a question. I'm curious about, and maybe it's kind of what's going on in my own life, Senate family. Was the, was the library always going to adult daycare? Is that like a good thing? Um, we started doing it again recently. I want to say within the last quarter. Yeah. Performance. Uh, just this year. Yes, here, yes. But before this year, we all. It is no, no, it's the new program. How are y'all liking? What's the experience been with the adult daycares? The feedback I'm getting from the librarians is that they do like it. They are trying to reach more organizations to see about us going to them. Um, because they are adult daycares, some of them are still closed to health reasons right now. So they've had trouble finding some of them that they're willing to work with us. But they are rotating with the branches that we are already doing uh, drop out crest um, and connecting with them that way. But if you guys find any adult bakers that would like for us to come, uh, you can email me as well, and I can pass that over to Ms. Bird and I think a lot of the stuff, you know, the, the crafts, the activities, you know, a lot of the folks are home, they're homebound where they can't really, it's hard to transport them. So I think it's very important. Friends at the library. I, I don't have any slides, I'm sorry. Uh, but I just wanted to let you guys know what we've been up to at Main Branch. We're now able to accept credit cards instead of just cash only. So that's brought in some additional sales. We've had more people able to, to spend. Nobody carries cash all the time anymore. Um, we're working, well, I'm working to try to get an additional unit so we'll be able to do it at South Mills because right now we're running off of an Apple phone that on the Wi-Fi here. So we got to get, we got to get it set up for South Mills. And currently we are only open one day a month at South Mills, but I have additional volunteers, hopefully that are going to be able to open a couple more days in a month for us. Um, this past month, April was kind of the slowest for us so for this whole year. We only managed just under $800, but the rest of the year had been pretty good. And we were able to donate for the children's uh, summer reading program. We donated $7,000 towards 
I'm sorry, eight thousand dollars towards the the prizes and, and the presentation. Continuing to tie in with whatever presentations or projects are going on here with our display to encourage more patrons. Right, uh, one of the things that we have can, even though none of the items are late, late, late thing, um, we're sad and happy to announce that Maribel will be leaving us as the recording secretary. She's going to a better place in the, in the city, she's moving up, and we're excited about that. And so, Maribel will move up to engineering public works as the administrative supervisor. Uh, she's been doing a great job. Uh, even though I'm, I'm sad to let her go, I, I was the one that motivated her to move up somewhere else to, to keep in the expander horizon. But that being said, uh, obviously we need a recording secretary, and so we need the board's discretion. If you want to, anybody want to volunteer for your to, to be the minute person? We have somebody to take care of the technology part of it. Uh, I want you to ponder it. It's not a, a voting item. Perhaps my director can do the favor and do the minutes for this time. Uh, and then if you decide, and if not, you can decide I'll find one of the staff members. Or so. But I just want to let you know again, my very was like my right hand person. She's a jack of all trades, but I'm happy to. And this is, I, I had to ask her, do you want me to announce it right now? Because nobody knew other than that it's the people, but she's moving up to a better place in the city. I'm up, I'm not about everybody moving up. Uh, and so she's moving up to a better congratulations. So again, I want you to ponder if one of you guys in the courtroom wants to be the recording secretary at the final state. Obviously, you voted for money back. Okay. <laughs> but uh, we need to put a voting item for next next agenda item for next next month so we can decide. We need not we have some options, but we prefer if you guys give first day. Okay. Any questions on that? I, I have a question, but not related to that. Sure. To this. Yes. Are we are you seeking or are they seeking volunteer? Yes. Yes, organization. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So yes. If I get my grocery group involved, please contact. Uh, I'm here. And there's a contact. It should be there. It should okay. be there. First, you can scan the oh, okay. okay, yeah, you can okay. scan the QR code and it should yeah. take you to the website where they can sign up for oh, volunteer. Yeah. Yeah. Please feel free to take the flyers with you so you can um if you need more, let me know and I'll get you more. And then for those of you who are at the high school, maybe encouraging the students right. if any of them want to participate in the session. Well, not, not only want to actually participate. Yeah. We, we should all have a vested interest in this. It's just um, one department, it's a whole city. So. Okay, has these gone to the districts, like to the athletic? I'm not aware of it, but I'm sure it will be. Okay. Their parks department is working on it. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 we just got them today, so I'm sure that they're going to be spread. Thank you, board. Thank you, thank you for for the last three units have been replaced. Been replaced. So sorry for the heat. What's funny is that Brentsville Library was freezing. Yeah, <laughs> it's like so cold in there. Yeah, well, it still is. <laughs> They're gonna they're gonna be putting a regulator in there because the thermostat is outside, so it's complicated. But with the new AC system, they're gonna be better. There's nothing else to discuss. We need a motion to adjourn. I second. All in favor? Thank you all for all the work that you did. Thank you. Thanks, you know. How, how was PLA this year? I didn't